Number 98. The label on a pressurized can of spray disinfectant warns against heating the can above 130 degrees Fahrenheit. What are the corresponding temperatures on the Celsius and Kelvin temperature scales? Okay, another conversion, right? Temperature conversion, at least. So you guys should know by now that uh, the, I guess, the roadmap for temperature conversions is Fahrenheit could get converted into Celsius, which can then get converted into Kelvin. So Celsius is always the bridge between Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So we are at 130 degrees Fahrenheit here, and they want to know both Celsius and Kelvin. So I would have to go to Celsius and find that answer out, and then use that answer to go to Kelvin. So the first thing I got to do is find out what the 130 degrees Fahrenheit is into Celsius. So I want to solve for Celsius, so I have to pick a um, equation that is between Celsius and Fahrenheit, and I need to find out Celsius, so I'm going to use this one, right? This one is between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So this is the, the equation that I'm going to use. I'm just going to write it down here. So I'm going to say Celsius equals... I'm not going to write the T. The T stands for temperature, but we, we kind of get that these are temperatures, right? So Celsius equals 5 over 9 times Fahrenheit minus 32. Now, remember PEMDAS, this has to come first because it's in parentheses, and then you will multiply by 5 divided by 9. So if I plug this in, Celsius equals 5 over 9 times... 130 minus 32. Okay, so I'm going to do 130 minus 32. Correct sig figs. It's subtraction, so it's your rules with adding and subtraction. That's the least number after the decimal. If you guys don't know that, you could always check the previous questions out. Um, we got that all covered for you guys. So there's literally nothing here. There's no decimal here, so there's no numbers after the decimal, so zero. And just know that this 32 is an exact number. So exact numbers, just like conversions, they mean nothing as far as sig figs. So we don't care about it. So when I do 130 minus 32, I get 98. So my Celsius equals 5 over 9 times 98. So now I'm going to actually do that on the calculator. But now this is multiplication. So you have to take the least total. The 5 over 9 is an exact number. So I'm just going to write it over here. This is also an exact number. So that doesn't matter for sig figs. So it all comes from the number that you have. Your 98 has two sig figs, the 9 and the 8. So my answer should have two sig figs. So Celsius equals 5 over 9 times 98 which is 54.4. But we need two sig figs. I just wanted to write the three here for you. But the four is used as a rounding. That's going to not round the four anyway because it's, you know, not five or greater. So my Celsius would just be 54. So that would be over here. This is 54 degrees Celsius. That's the answer to the first one. So we're over here now, 54 degrees Celsius. So I have to use the 54 degrees Celsius to get to Kelvin. I can't use the 130 anymore. So I'm going to go from 54 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. What's the formula I'm going to use? It's got to be the one that I'm looking for Kelvin. And this is the only one. And it's between Kelvin and Celsius. So there it is. So I'm going to say Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273 0.15. Remember that 273.15 is an exact number, so it does not care or it does not matter for sig figs. Does not matter for sig figs. Okay, so Kelvin equals my Celsius was 54 plus 273.15. We're adding here, so Rules are after the decimal, right? Least number of sig figs after the decimal. But if I look at 54, there's zero 
sig figs after the decimal, so I should not see anything after the decimal. So 54 plus 273.15, you get 37 or 327.15, but nothing after the decimal, so this doesn't count. So it would just be 327 degrees Fahrenheit. So box that one off. So that's the answer for this one. 327 Fahrenheit. I'm just going to box this off as well. So those are your two answers. So 130 degrees Fahrenheit is 54 degrees Celsius and 327 degrees Fahrenheit. These are all the same temperatures, but they're just on a different scale. All right. This one was fun. This one was easy. And you know what else is easy peasy? Clicking that subscribe button, giving us a like. It would help us out a lot. And plus, if you hit the subscribe button, you will get all the answers to your upcoming questions. And chances are you'll probably do better on your quizzes or tests. So that's cool. All right. But anyway, I'll see you for the last question in this chapter. It's been a long ride, guys. But I'll see you guys in number 99. Let's go.